It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Denver Broncos and the Houston Texans. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. On a wonderful fall afternoon in the state of Texas, the roof is open and we've got football from NRG Stadium in Houston. Today we've got a compelling AFC matchup for you as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon joined as always by Charles Davis. Uh, CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they're hoping to get this offense on track in year two under Russell Wilson. Charles, I wouldn't have believed this. They were the lowest scoring offense in the league last year, just 16.9 points per game. And that means you have to change things up, and they certainly have. You talk about operating under new management. This team certainly is. I expect this offensive production to really rise. And Russell Wilson, I think we'll see much more of the Russell Wilson we've seen in the past. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Quickly to the air is Wilson. And his first pass is incomplete. Adam Troutman, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. To throw is Wilson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope they can come through on this play and get the series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. So two incompletions have led him to an early third and ten. Wilson. And that is incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. On fourth down, it's Riley Dixon on now to kick it away for Denver. Back deep is Tank Dell. Able to slither by. It'll go as a 50-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finalist, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Man in motion left, that's Collins. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 37, they work on second and six. 
And Stroud now to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Woods. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Patrick Sertan, the all-pro corner, up to make the tackle. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Here's Stroud. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. They get to him for a loss of four, and it brings up third down on the sack. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. They'll come up now third and nine. Now Stroud. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So a roughing the passer penalty there, CD. And we know that these pass rushers love to get after rookie quarterbacks, but they've still got to do it within the scope of the rules. And that time, the hit came just a little bit too late. And the official won't even think twice about pulling his flag on that one. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route. And that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Pierce on the counter. Ooh, the juke. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Pierce will try to pick it up. And I don't think he got there, no. Geez, short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. This from 44 yards away. And this one is right through. And it's now 3-0 Texans. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Now the third-year man back and healthy. It's Javante Williams. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? And shutting him off, now open field. And they will finally get 
him to the ground at the Texans 34. It's a gain of 35. Thought they were going to have him down a lot earlier, but he was able to shed that tackle. Shows the value of the weight room, doesn't it? Shows the value of the attitude when you run the football. Don't go down easily. Break a few tackles. Gain some additional yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now Wilson. That's to the rookie, Marvin Mims. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 11 more on that one and another first down. So for this defense, a tall order ahead trying to defend against Russell Wilson. Charles, your keys for how they might go about keeping him in check? Well, before we even get to the keys, let's start with the problems he presents because he feels pressure so well. He's got a great sixth sense, maybe even a seventh and eighth. He knows where the pressure's coming from. He knows how to slide away from it, sometimes run away from it, and then he finds good throwing lanes to deliver downfield. So to me, it's that pressure inside, big, tall guys to make him try and throw over them and make his height work against him. Now Wilson. This is caught. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Williams. Going to be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. And he won't get to the markers. They're going to stop him for a second straight play right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Back to throw, here's Stroud. This will be caught by Brown. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. 
From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Worth in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Again, it's Drown. That's into the hands of Woods. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Now a second and two. Pierce takes it straight ahead. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. 42 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. But well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he's got Jordan complete right side. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Stroud. And yeah, this one's going to sail on him a bit, and it's incomplete. Nico Collins, the intended receiver, but now it's third down. Now they'll go play action here with Stroud. Catch is made, it's Schultz on the out route. And he is stopped just short on third down. Got nine yards, but needed ten. I thought maybe when he caught, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They'll try and run for it. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. Stroud to the air on first and ten. Man open left side is Brown. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Stroud to throw it. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Tell you what, Brandon, if I see a dime look, if I see six defensive backs near the goal line, I'm changing to a running play every time. And they had six there. Surprised he didn't audible at the line? Very much so. I'm going to count on my offensive line in this situation against the lighter defensive backs and try and push it across the end zone that way. Stroud now on third and two. Flushed out right. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. C.J. Stroud taking it in from four yards out. And the Texans have taken the lead. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here. And that winds up a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 10 to 3. That one in the books as a 12 play drive. And it was CJ Stroud who finished off that drive with the touchdown run.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Denver's offense ready to go again. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily none. So first and ten here for Wilson and the Broncos at their 25-yard line. They'll hand this to Williams to start things out. And he's going to have a Broncos first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Boy, some big runs here, Charles, already in this first quarter. Yep, the lanes are there. Go ahead and exploit them. But what I like the most, how decisive he is, putting his foot in the ground and going. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Again, it's Williams. We'll get this to about the 38. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. Now it's Wilson. That's to the sideline and incomplete. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. On third down, Wilson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. They run with a former Bengal at Samai J.P. Ryan. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. P. Ryan again on second down. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Ten three, our score after one here on EA Sports. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two. The Broncos on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Trying for it with P. Ryan. And this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start. And then a nice tackle to finish things off. So they'll say no to the 50-yard field goal try. Instead, the offense out there, they're going for it. They'll try and run for it. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. I like that call. I'm assuming you're with me. I am. I'm totally with you. And to me, they saw something that they liked there. Because, let's face it, it's going to be a mass of bodies. But it feels like the head coach has said, my best runner, 
over my best blocker. Give it to me right now. And you only needed one yard where they were on the other side of the field. Seems like a no-brainer. If we can't get one yard, what are we doing out here? A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and ten. Play action. It's Wilson. And that is incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game. But after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Now it's Wilson. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. They overload him that time on the safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. How about that one? The so-called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. The kick by Lutz is good, and that'll bring him back within four. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. the made field goal lots to kick it away and he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25 yard line the Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense he's over 40 yards here in the second quarter been nice and effective for them hasn't he he has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards You've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second and six, just inside the 30. Stroud looking to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Throwing now is Stroud. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. That'll be a 49-yard punt, six yards there on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Javante Williams and the rest of the Bronco offense back out onto the field. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. 
Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Williams going to get it again on second down. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Houston set to take over. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. On first down, here's Stroud. And that one into the hands of Brown downfield. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Pierce now up the middle. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. This offense so far on third down, they've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Uh, give to Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was a terrific play, causing a loss as a middle linebacker simple. You can either fill holes or you can attack them, as he did there. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now Stroud. Target at Schultz. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 12 yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. 
Nice connection there for a really nice gain. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Call it a gain of three on the play. And it'll be second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet. Did a little toe -toe. And down he goes. Pressure gets him back at the 14. DJ Jones in there to get him. It's a loss of five. Well, we saw him score on the ground earlier in the ball game. This time, the defense says not so fast. Yeah, that's good scouting and good awareness, isn't it? Because you always have to be wary of him keeping it himself, especially in this part of the field. Because if he doesn't like what he sees, you know he'll take off and try to go for it himself. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And his kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This taken in right around the goal line. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. A touchdown would tie it. They trail 13-6 as they come up with a first and 10. Throwing is Wilson. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So a mistake there, Charles, from the rookie pass rusher. And oftentimes when you make the jump from college to the NFL, you have to adjust to the rules. But in this case, the rule's no different than in college. Once the ball's gone, you can't continue on and get your shot in. That's one where you have to have some discipline. And even though he's a rookie, he really should know better. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the gun, it's Wilson. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. I would say it would probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely in different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. So 
So from the 36 now, first and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. 86 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Well, he's broken off some big-time runs here in this first half. Yeah, and let's just face it. When you go into a game, you think you've got the plays that are going to work, but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen, your confidence rises, and he's running with terrific ability right now. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. Now second and five. Wilson. Touchdown Broncos! Russ able to connect with Cortland Sutton there. And the Broncos are an extra point away from evening this one up. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Lutz good on the extra point, and that will tie things up at 13. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And now out comes Houston. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Stroud's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. On the bootleg, Stroud. That'll be caught left side by Woods. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Stroud. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. And this offense on third down today, they're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. The throwing again is Stroud. That is caught. And he is going to have a Texans first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. First and 10, it's Stroud. He's going to leave this for a running back. It's complete. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. I've worked with you long enough now to know you like that decision. Go safe, pressure coming. Hit your guy underneath. 
It's an excellent decision, but he knew it came with consequences, and that's him getting hit on the play, but able to dump it to his running back and gain some yardage. I liked everything about it, especially his ability to stay in the pocket and execute. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 24-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Here goes Stroud again. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Under pressure, they got him again. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Alex Singleton, the offensive line is in tatters as that's now three sacks and three plays. But Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. So we come upon halftime with a tie score, 13 all. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And this taken in at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the peewee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And Stroud now to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Stroud. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's good for a Texas. 
Watson first down, a 12-yard pickup. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Now a handoff for Pierce. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They had three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's about it. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Now here's Stroud. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Broncos will have solid field position here as they take over at their 45-yard line. Third and long that time. He was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him. And what I mean by that is what you said. Third and long. Got to push it downfield to try and pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation, and they took advantage of the young man right there. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They'll start following the interception in great field position at the 45. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at the 45. Throwing to start the drive, Wilson. That is incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll take a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. On second down, Williams. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Wilson. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up four. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Texans back out there and ready to go. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. It's incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. That good for 19 and a first down. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Mm -hmm. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Stroud sets up the play action. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Josie Jewell, the linebacker, getting the sack. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. as a 53-yard punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And Denver getting set to take the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it gonna take? to get back on track. Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. That was Will Anderson getting home and finishing the play. Well, Parker, I would say just avoid play action, but that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he's only able to work this from the 8 to the 10 for a pickup of 2. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. How to approach this. Third down and 16 yards to go. Now it's Wilson. That's going to be caught by Judy. And he'll be taken down, losing yardage back at the nine-yard line. This will wind up a loss on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I think that call was made not so much to try and get the first down, although <laughs> they would have taken it if they could have gotten it, but to give their punter a little bit of space and try and help out their defense. Yeah, they got the safe completion on third. So from their own end zone here, this kicks away. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans will take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 42. Stroud to throw it. And this is caught. It's Brown. And he's brought down. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Throwing now is Stroud. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. 
Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Broncos are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Well, this is something we've seen before, partner. We've seen a defense bait a rookie, pretend to leave a window open, and then the defensive back jumped it as soon as the ball was released. Big time play. They love taking advantage of the youngsters. And in this case, it paid off well. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos. Just shy of midfield at the 49. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson, and his throw is incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy. And now it's second down. This is your day, man. Turn it up. Here's Wilson. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. He was waving his arms, won the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but <laughs> since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> cold-blooded. <laughs> And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. From the 29, here's second down at a yard. Here's Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Now Wilson on first down. Sutton reeling it in on the left side. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up second down. Now Wilson. Open man, and again it's Sutton. And the Broncos are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. They'll bring a tight end in motion. Williams is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. So stuffed from the two. Now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action? Definitely. Let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. Williams again. Pushing for the end zone, but he's not going to get there. They stop him just shy of the goal line. Calling a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They'll run it with Williams. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. 
Javante Williams punching it in from a yard away. And the Broncos have broken the tie. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Lutz with the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. The Texans offense set to regain possession. They trail 20 to 13 our score as they have it first and 10. the ground it's Pierce to begin the drive and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here and if it's a long play so be it but the main goal get a couple of first downs run some plays run some clock allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score on second down it's Stroud and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Stroud looking to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Stroud now on first and 10. He's got it to Collins complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That's good for 28 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession. And this is an offense that can really use a good drive. And they're off to a fast start here. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 32-yard line. They'll run it here with Pierce. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Big Mike Purcell with a tackle. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Stroud working out of the gun. Quick slant to Brown. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 15-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And now they're inside the ten as he's brought down at the nine. 
64 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. This is a second and four, ball at the nine. Now Stroud. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Brevin Jordan, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this game here in the fourth. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And an important one that is as we are all tied now early in this fourth quarter. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams, we shine the spotlight on him. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receiver receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block but they're helping out too yeah everyone's pitching in he's had a good game and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up they suspected it it was a power play up the middle coming at them and boy were they right that defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down they'll break the huddle come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-oh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. On second down, Wilson. That's complete to Troutman right side. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. Third and four. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. A good job in coverage there. They took away his top read on the play, so he went through his progressions and ended up settling on his running back who scored on their last 
possession, but the coverage held. It goes incomplete. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been terrific so far. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. And they'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now second and nine. Toss play, here's Pierce. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 99 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. When you see a big time run to the outside, it always comes back to setting the edge, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, and they, they were perfect at setting the edge there. And the funny part is, both sides of the ball talk about it. The offense has to set the edge so you can get outside. The defense wants to set the edge to control things so they can kick the run back inside. Offense wins there. Offense won big. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And maybe the wrong read there as he's going to go down immediately. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Pretty good job there defensively of stringing that one out. Yeah, you've got a quarterback who's waiting and waiting for something to develop, and it just never materialized, and down he went behind the line of scrimmage. The second down throw now from Stroud. And he finds his target. It's Schultz. It'll be a gain of five. And now third down and six to go. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Set to take over, the Broncos offense trots back out. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Wilson and the Broncos now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Wilson, pass complete to Judy on the out route. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now it's Wilson. A short one to the tight end, Troutman. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. 
That's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. There's Wilson to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 30. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now this throw caught left side. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 12 more yards there and another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. down but this one winds up to be incomplete but the great coach said football is a really simple game rush theirs protect yours and he's talking about those guys throwing the football in this situation the rush one hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion here's second and ten throwing again here wilson and he's taken to the ground but he was pulled down by the face mask here come the flags and I believe this is going to be a first down. So a potential big play by this defense wiped out by the face mask. And disappointing because it was so unnecessary. They had the sack. But the officials are definitely keeping a close eye on the quarterback, especially the referee. They were able to spot that one immediately. On first down, Wilson. To him again. They overload him that time with a safety blitz, and he winds up being dropped for a loss of seven. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game, even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. They'll hand it off now, Williams. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line. They get six yards back on the run, but still have a third and long situation forthcoming. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Again, it's Williams. And they'll rally and stop him short of the first down at about the six. Give him eight yards on the carry, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Got to kick it, right? I mean, even the short yardage, you, you boot this thing, don't you? Yeah, but I know how aggressive you are. I know what you want. You want to go for it, don't you? You're feeling it, aren't you? Yeah, but treat it like a football game, not like Madden. I like that. Fight the temptation, kick the field goal, because if you go for it and don't get it, you put a lot on your defense in a short amount of time. The kick by Lutz is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Following the made field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Heading out is the Texans' offense as they get set to take over here. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ballgame. Right. 
Stroud to the air on first and ten. That's complete. It's Collins. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. First and 10, it's Stroud. And his throw here is incomplete. He has just not had his focus in this game. It's not one drop. It's not two. That's three for this contest. Yeah, uncharacteristic for any NFL receiver, and he's no exception. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Pierce now up the middle. And not much room to speak of. He'll get about three up to the 41. Here's third and seven. A shotgun snap to Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 39. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. On first down, here's Stroud. On a slant, here's Collins. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Stroud. Caught by Woods. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and this will wind up being a third and three. Stroud will look to throw once more. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. Oh, he forces one there. It's a potential dagger as it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to take over at their own two-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And... Hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. They'll try and run down some clock with Williams. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ball game. A 
Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. There's Wilson. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. The punt team on now is from their end zone. They get it away. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And they will take over first and 10. So Stroud and the Texans down 23-20, a minute 44 to go. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Stroud. His throw incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Here's Stroud. He'll get the hook up there to Woods. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. A big play looming on third down. Stroud to throw it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains, and they save that final timeout. But well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understand where they are on the field. Just the one timeout remaining as they try to navigate this two-minute drill. First and ten. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Now second and four. Now Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. Here now, third down. To throw with Stroud. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they get five there on third and two. And now the timeout call. So five seconds left, and a field goal would send us to overtime. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period.
So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. So it's the Broncos who are going to get the first shot at things. They'll have it here as we start in overtime. And we will not see a return to start overtime. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Now these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that'll make it second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. They go play action with Wilson. And a quick throw there is incomplete. Adam Troutman, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. To throw is Wilson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 48-yard line. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. From the 44-yard line, here's a second down and six. Now Wilson. Right over the middle. He's got man hurts the tight end. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. They work now on second and nine. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play, one that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Coming up on a third and nine. Opening drive of overtime as they look to convert. Wilson. That is caught. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 19. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. Yeah. 
So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Wilson. On the slant, completes to Sutton. And the Broncos are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Defensively now, the ultimate challenge. Of course, the ball gets in the end zone. This thing's over. And I remember my coach has always talked about in goal line situations, and now you're in overtime where they have to keep them to three points. Otherwise, this thing is done. Win your individual battle within the framework of the team defense. Beat that guy across from you and make a play. I expect him to attack on defense and not sit back. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. Williams will try again. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Seven big yards on the carry there to get him within range of the goal line with third down upcoming. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Well, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. And now fourth down. What do you do? And after being stuffed on that play, it puts a little doubt in the minds of a head coach who has the football, I'm sure. Do we go for it here? Do we take the three points and continue to play on? Because you know he wants to get in the end zone. That ends the game. But I've been on the defensive side before. They've got to be energized right now and almost challenging them to go for it because they've got to be confident. So they do get the short field goal here to get them the all-important overtime lead. But, Charles, you wonder if they'll wind up ruining the fact that they were able to get down into the red zone, yet not able to find the touchdown that would have won them the game. Brandon, you're absolutely right. In overtime, when you get the ball first, the hope is your opponents never see the football. But now they're going to get a drive to try and win it, or at least keep the game alive with a field goal. And I'm getting a dictionary out to look up ruin. <laughs> So only a field goal on that opening drive of overtime. Will that hold up? We'll find out as the kick's away. And here comes the Texans now. Well, it's pretty simple now. They need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime or obviously, Charles, a touchdown to win it. Yeah, and I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? Overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because they're going to play everyone back, keep everything in front. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Toss left side for Pierce. And he's taken down, but not before he gets to the Broncos 33. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. Interesting, he told us that he likes to run right more than left, but there he... It looked pretty comfortable going left for a big gain, Charles. Kind of like a basketball player who has a dominant side that he dribbles to, but the ability to cross that over, change it up, and break a tendency can often lead to great results, as we just saw there. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They've had some success here in overtime on this opening drive running the football. Right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there and available to them. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. A 
A yard all they need, but it's third down. Pierce will try to pick it up. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Stroud to throw it. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. In the red zone, precision is the watchword. If the throw is a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. Now is second and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. Robert Woods, and finally taken down at the four-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to keep the game alive. And his kick here is good. And we are tied once again here in the overtime session. Both teams swapping field goals on their respective first drives of overtime. So now, you know the drill, it's on to old school sudden death. Yeah, it sounds exciting, doesn't it? Can I be a little bit of Dennis Downer here, though? That drive able to go that far yet they had to kick the field goal to keep playing you would have think you would have thought maybe could they punch it in and we go ahead get, and end it we get more free football oh yeah good point Come on. i'm back up beat again forget the downer stuff will three points be enough to do it we'll soon know as we continue here in overtime taken at the goal line and a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles, because my palms <laughs> sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself, but let's face it. Our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? A short one of the tight end, Troutman. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. And partner, I've not been a huge fan of a certain cliche, but it does actually apply here. Who actually wants it more now? I mean, both of them have gotten field goals here in overtime. Yeah, they've been out there a long time trading field goals. Now we'll see who wants it more. Yeah, mental conditioning as well as physical conditioning is going to determine who wins this one. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. On first down, Wilson. And incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. 
let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right. Anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath. And boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. A huge play there in overtime. 48 yards. Just straight money right there. The biggest drive of the game, a chance to win it in overtime. If they've been saving that play, they sure pulled it out at the right time. A huge turn of events there. So it all rests now on the right leg of Will Lutz. And now the Texans want to call another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. So long from Houston.